Hello and welcome to Detroit Public Television's Candidate Conversations. I'm Vicki Thomas. And I'm Jerome Vaughn. These conversations are part of Detroit Public TV's My Vote Initiative, a program that has proven instrumental in helping Detroit voters learn more about the candidates running for office. Today we'll hear from the candidates in District 5, Adam Olye and Mary Sheffield. Now the format will be simple. Questions will be asked of each candidate and each candidate will have approximately a minute to answer. At the end of our conversation, you will have 30 seconds to address voters. And remember, all of these conversations can be found on the myvote.org website. So let's begin our District 2 conversation with a brief introduction. Mr. Ollier? Good afternoon. My name is Adam Ollier. I'm running for City Council in District 5, and I'm running because it's time for us to focus on our neighborhoods. Not something we've been doing as a city, but something we've got to do. I grew up in the North End, and the neighborhood I grew up in is very different than the neighborhood that we're living in today. It's been a subject of violence, blight, and a lack of investment. And as your next city council person, I'm committed to making sure that we make neighborhoods a priority by cleaning up our zoning ordinances and making it a real priority. And now a brief introduction by Ms. Sheffield. Good afternoon. I'm Mary Sheffield, and I am also a candidate for Detroit City Council in District 5 born and raised here in the city of Detroit and have a true passion uh, for our city and making sure that we move forward in the direction that we need to go. I believe in District 5 we're facing some serious problems, blight, uh, the lights not being turned on, and we need to make a, a district that is economically competitive so that young people like myself will want to stay in the district and also attract young people back to the city of Detroit. So I want to focus on the issues that matter and make sure that the people have a voice at the table as we move forward in Detroit. Thanks so much. We're going to ask you a few questions now. The first one, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing the city of Detroit and how will you fix it if you get elected? Let's start with you, Ms. Sheffield. I think the biggest issue that we face um, really is, is, is our, the public safety and crime in the city of Detroit. Um, when I speak with residents every day, I hear several stories of just, you know, the, 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 the crime, the vicious, violent crime in our neighborhood. So I think the way of addressing that is making sure that I have a working relationship with the new chief of police who really seems like he's a no-nonsense type of person who's really been putting his foot down. So I want to work with him, making sure we have the most effective and innovative crime strategies here in the city of Detroit. I also think it's important that we activate the reserves. There's several officers that are willing to work right now and we can use those officers to really handle the nonviolent issues in, this, in the city of Detroit and then sweet, that kind of frees up the sworn officers to handle the more vicious and violent crimes in the city of Detroit. Also when we talk about public safety we have to talk about the street lights being on. People are tired of coming out and street lights are not on. Businesses won't thrive. Businesses will not want to move into our communities without the street lights being on. So part of public safety is also turning the lights on in the city of Detroit. Mr. Ollier, biggest issue and solutions. I think when you start talking about the city of Detroit, our biggest issue is our neighborhoods. We haven't done a good enough job of focusing on them and saying that our number one priority is to make sure that people who live here who have spent their entire lives investing in their neighborhoods are getting a return on their investment, that they feel safe, that their neighborhoods are clean. And for us to do that, we've really got to recruit people. We've got to convince people that grew up in the city that maybe have moved out to the suburbs or are living on other places, that this is the place that they can really make their dreams come true. I mean, and that starts with not just living in the city of Detroit, but it starts with opening our businesses. It starts with real entrepreneurship in our neighborhoods. Because if people don't have jobs, then we're going to continue to have crime. And that's the big issue, is that people are not working. And by starting up our own businesses and developing our neighborhoods, we can really address those issues. All right. As you may or may not know, a neighborhood in your district has been labeled as the second most violent neighborhood in America. Tell the residents in your district how you will help protect them. I mean, the first thing we have to do is we have to say that we are going to go out and do that. I mean, I grew up in the North End and it has not necessarily been the safest place in the world, but it's not because we haven't gone out and said that our neighborhood is not going to tolerate that type of violence, that we're not going to tolerate the types of things that are going on, that we aren't going to let people be victimized in our neighborhoods. I worked very hard uh, as liaison between the mayor's office and the city council to push through the public lighting authority, which is going to be a $180 million investment in streetlights which means they're actually going to work, which means that when people are committing crimes, we're going to see them and we can report them. But you need people who are going to go out there and say, this is no longer going to be acceptable in my neighborhood, and to go out and do that. I've done that in my neighborhood, been involved in those types of walks, been involved in actually saying, hey, this is what we are going to allow. But it really starts with employment. We've got to make sure that people have a job, 
that they have an education, that they have a career. And people without those things will continue to commit crimes, and they will continue to do that and victimize our neighborhoods. So we have got to teach those people and our neighbors that skills and work is number one priority. Ms. Sheffield? I think really just stepping into the neighborhoods, making sure that we are revitalizing existing community groups, neighborhood block programs, um, and really making sure that they have the resources that they need to really um, handle some of the issues themselves. We can't count on the police force and city government to handle issues on their own. So I think the new council members are going to have to step behind that council table, step into these neighborhoods, revitalize, revitalize existing groups, and really get hands-on. Um, we have to, have to let them know it's no nonsense. I just recently participated uh, in a walk and rally for two elderly women in my district who were assaulted. So that's the type of presence that we need. We need to increase um, presence of officers in the street, community policing, and letting people know that we're not having it. And it does go back to education. We have to educate these young people, provide opportunities, summer youth programs, jobs for these young people, so they can have something productive to do. And you have to have some sort of responsibility uh, on the part of people in those communities. Yeah. How do you get around the no snitch policy? I, I, we'll start I mean, with Mr. Okay. Olier. I think when you start talking about snitching, I think people are really afraid of reprisal. I've been working over in the Martin Luther King homes and people are saying, we're being victimized by crime, but they are afraid that if they call, they will become victims themselves. And they'll say, so-and-so called the police and she got beat up last week. They need to know that they can call me and I am more than happy to stand up and do that. But fundamentally, we've got to say that as a community, we're going to stand against this. So it's not me saying, hey, this is a problem or I'm telling on so-and-so. It's us saying this is unacceptable in our neighborhood and that you can call somebody who's going to stand up and do it. And I believe that's me. That's what it is all day, every day. I think, I think it's, it, it goes to uh, really developing and making sure that the relationship between residents and, and cops and policing is different because people think whether well, the relationship really is not the best. So developing, developing a better relationship um, between police, police officers and residents I think is a great idea and really just letting these young people know that it's about really solving these issues because it could be them. They could be a victim of crime in the, in the neighborhoods of the city of Detroit. We know that crime and poverty are, are intricately linked. Uh, we also know that, generally speaking, small businesses are the biggest creator of jobs in this country. What will you do, if elected, to support uh, the existence and creation of small businesses in your district? Let's start with you, Ms. Sheffield. Okay. Well, I think two things. One, I, I've been uh, blessed to uh, be a part of an organization called Detroit Association of Black Organizations where we really train um, small businesses and guide them, teaching them how to write grants and really te teaching them how to become an entrepreneur. So I think if I expand that existing nonprofit that has been in the community for over 80 years into my district to help young people start businesses, teach them how to not just work with somebody but start their own business, I think that's important. I also think going down Gratiot, that's a good area to, to really attract businesses to the city of Detroit. We need to create business districts where we can offer incentives to businesses to move into the city of Detroit and also make it a process that is a lot easier than it is now because a lot of people complain about the process. Getting Starting a business is a lot hard in the city of Detroit. So making the process easy, creating incentives for businesses to want to invest in the city of Detroit and hire Detroiters as well. Mr. Oliak? You know, I got my master's in urban planning and I focus on economic development. One of the best tools that we can use is business incubators. You look at the neighborhoods across the city that have been very, very successful at recruiting and retaining and building small businesses. They've been able to make it easy, whether it's take Tech Town or communities in Southwest Detroit. When you say this is how you are successful starting a small business, they are successful. The Detroit Economic Growth Corporation hasn't done a good enough job of working in neighborhoods. And that's something as a council person I'm committed to doing, on saying that in these neighborhoods, this is how we're going to focus on it. And every neighborhood has very different challenges and very different support networks. And by building upon them, we can be very, very, very successful with business incubators. All right. Um, since one of you will win the seat, tell the voters what makes you uniquely qualified to be a city council member with the emphasis on uniquely qualified. And we'll start with you, Ms. Sheffield. Um, I think I'm uniquely qualified. I, I, I want to touch just briefly on the fact that I have had the opportunity to come from a such rich and powerful legacy in the city of Detroit. I don't want to lean on that, but I do want to touch on it because 
with that legacy, I've been able to develop a relationship uh, with the business community, with grassroots organizations, um, with the faith-based community. And I think that will help me out a lot moving forward as a council member because I've already developed a lot of these relationships. Also, working at the Wayne County Jail, I see firsthand um, the violent and vicious crimes that really land some of these people behind bars. And also, just such good young people who are placed behind bars who just really need the opportunity uh, to really do right. Um, so I think that prepares me. And just the fact that I am a people person from the, from the beginning since I've been here in the city of Detroit, I have shown my leadership skills to lead and stand for the people. I have mentored at-risk youth, people who need help. And I know that I will be a voice of the people moving forward. And Mr. Ollier, what makes you uniquely qualified? I think when you start talking about uniquely qualified, I think my professional experience is unmatched. You know, I've worked at the state level as a chief of staff, State Senator Johnson, where we got more bills passed than anybody else including utility shutoff protections for seniors, the M1 rail, the regional transit authority, getting rid of the driver's responsibility fee, and a host of other legislation. And as you start talking about what's going on in the city of Detroit, I think the relationships with state legislatures and the state is going to be increasingly important as we start saying, how do we get out of this emergency management? How do we move forward? How do we bring those state dollars back to the city of Detroit? But even closer to home, I've been the liaison between the mayor's office and the city council. And that is an incredibly unique perspective having sitting at the table and it's my responsibility to get council work done. You know, so when council people have questions, they come to me. When the mayor needs something done through council, it's my job. So I think that's the type of experience that you need to look for when you look for a council person. May I say something? May I say something? Yes. I, oh, you want to rebut? Yes. Okay. I would just say with the experience, I would just um, remind voters or just to kind of to, to look into the fact that with the power and the fact that he has his foot in the door, um, what has he done for the residents in District 5 thus far? With being the chief of staff with Burke Johnson and working with the mayor's office right now, to me it seems as if you've only advanced yourself. Um, but what have you done for the residents in District 5 with all this political experience and with your foot already in the door, what have you done for the residents in District 5? You may I respond? Yes, you may. I'm glad you asked. You know, <laughs> working for Senator Johnson, we got the Regional Transit Authority done, which is going to mean you can take one system from the edges of Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, into the city of Detroit. It's been the first time that we got it done after, I believe, 24 tries. And that's going to make a huge difference when you're talking about being able to get to work or not get to work. The driver's responsibility fee that used to affect individuals because of their inability to pay. I mean, that is a significant problem for folks. When you start talking about my experience and the work I've done in the mayor's office, the Public Lighting Authority, as you've already talked about, is going to be huge. That's something that I had a leading role in making happen. So when you talk about street lights coming on, it's going to come on because of the work that I did, both in the state legislature and at the city level. But aside from that, I mean, the constituent services and the relationships that I've been able to do have been incredible, working with business owners to open small businesses, pushing them through the permitting process and all kinds of things. But I'm very proud of my record at helping residents of the 5th District, the city of Detroit, and the state of Michigan. Okay. You, you mentioned uh, transit, and that's long been uh, an issue for uh, Detroiters, how to get around town. What's it going to take, and what will you do to make Detroit's transit system a point of pride for its residents. Let's start with you, Mr. Ollier. Thank you. I think when you start talking about transportation in the city of Detroit, it doesn't work. And it's unacceptable that we have two wildly inefficient systems that you could be waiting on for an hour or two hours when we start talking about it getting darker, the lights not working, the children taking the system, and getting home and all the issues that are related to it. But I'm going to make transportation a huge issue. Right now, the reason that we got the Regional Transit Authority done was because we were able to work with council people and members from the state all over the city to fix those types of issues, whether that be Republicans or Democrats. Transportation in the city of Detroit is an issue that we've got to work on, and the only way we're going to get it fixed is by convincing those folks to come down and ride it. And that's how we're going to fix transportation. I've been involved in every major transportation deal, whether that be the Regional Transit Authority or the M1 Rail. Um, transportation, of course, is a huge issue. Recently, I um, rode, I actually went down to the Rosa Transit Center myself because I wanted to see firsthand some of the issues that our residents are facing. And it was really an eye-opening experience for me to see 
um, so many people who really rely on the system. Um, when I personally went, I stayed for about almost 30 minutes waiting for a bus that was about 30 minutes behind. So I was a little agitated myself. So I see the concerns that people are having with the bus system here in the city of Detroit. And to me, making sure that people have efficient bus service, that they're able to get to work from and work, from home to work, and that they're able to get to where they need to be, to me, is extremely important that we have bus, buses that are up and running, that are not broken, falling apart, um, and that we also have um, just safe uh, transportation. People complain a lot about not being safe on buses. Um, so making sure we just have an efficient bus service that is able to allow residents to and from work and to get where they need to be, and also outside of the suburbs, too, as well. Next, I'd like to have each of you just share your vision for District 5. And we'll start with you, Mr. Oye. I mean, when you start talking about District 5, it should be the type of place that you're proud to say you're from, but it should be the type of place that it's easy to recruit people to, the type of place that people want to move to. And I think people have seen that with some of the neighborhoods in downtown or midtown, but every neighborhood in District 5 is unique and special. And what we've got to do is advocate for streets like Pennsylvania, We've got to say that neighborhoods along Dexter, the neighborhoods that don't have a name, are going to have one because there is real opportunity for growth. District 5 is fertile ground for entrepreneurs. It's fertile ground for dreamers. And an ideal vision is a place that's neat, safe, clean, but that people say, I'm going to have a family. I want to raise my family in District 5. Uh, my vision for District 5 really is just a district that is a lot more safer, that is cleaner, and that is economically competitive. Um, I think we have a very unique district. There's a lot of economic development that is taking place on the water, but a lot of people that I speak with are a little um, upset that that same economic development is not happening within the neighborhoods. So my vision really is to work to create more development throughout our neighborhoods, cleaning up the blight, the abandonment, the dilap dilapidated homes, and going after that $52 million that was awarded to the city of Detroit to eliminate some of that blight and just really trying to create jobs to empower the residents in District 5 to get up and let's handle some of these issues on our own. I was going to say, so if you know, you're looking forward, if you're elected, how would you characterize what you envision to be your relationship with the next mayor and with the emergency manager, Ms. Sheffield? Um, a great relationship. I mean, whoever is elected, I know I'm going to have to work with. Um, so just making sure that, you know, I work with my colleagues and that the issues of my district are going to be heard and addressed. Um, making sure that, you know, the crime, the high crime areas, um, and just that the major issues in my district are addressed and that they understand what District 5 is all about and the issues that they have. So I want to have a great working relationship with the mayor and also um, the new council members as well. Mr. Oliet? Yeah, I think when you start talking about it, one of the biggest problems that we've had as a city is that the mayor and the city council haven't been able to get along. And that's something that I, I have experienced firsthand. But it's the same issue we have at every level of government. What we need are more people who are committed to doing what their residents want. And if you look at the polls today, most people are upset with city council. Most people are upset with Congress. But the difference is we are not electing people and asking them and holding them accountable to doing what we want and getting things done. People want their neighborhoods fixed, and that's what I'm committed to doing, to work with whoever else is elected. According to Data Driven Detroit, 22.4% of the people in your district do not have a high school diploma. 36% of the people in your district are living in poverty. Do you think one is related to the other, and how can you change that? And we'll start with Ms. Sheffield. Yes, I do. I think they are related to each other. Um, and I think it just all goes back to really educating and providing opportunities for our young people. Um, there's so many young people in, in the district that I meet every day um, who have that ambition in them, but they don't see any opportunities. They walk outside, they see the blight, they see the homes that are just falling apart. And it's almost as if this is all there is. So we need to empower our young people. We need to empower them, we need to educate them. Someone needs to step in, mentor these young people, and really let them know that there's more than what they see. And it is about education. A lot of the jobs that come to the city of Detroit, their people in Detroit are not even qualified for those jobs. So we have to educate our young people. Some people are not uh, really um, college people, uh, college uh, students. So we need to find apprenticeships or you know any, any type of programs that we can educate our young people to prepare them for jobs and to get them working so that they can be productive people in our community. Mr. Olier. Yeah, I think it, it's absolutely a cycle. You know, I was involved this summer with United Way. They've got the. Uh, meet up, eat up programs. And so, so many of our children are starving. Imagine going to work every day, having not been fed, going an entire summer without eating. 
a lot of our kids are dealing with very real issues. So when we start talking about how they are performing in school, they have all these other life issues that we aren't addressing. And as a city, we've got to start to make addressing those other life issues a priority before they fall through the cracks. And it's unacceptable how many of our students do. But they've got to feel successful in schools and continue to do that. But we can't abandon the generation right now without skills, without an education, and say, well, let's just focus on the young people. We'll get it right this time. We've got to say, hey, everybody needs a skill. Everybody needs to have an opportunity for gainful employment. And that means real skills program. That means carpentry, building. It means everything. Plumbers. These are real jobs that people can have that we can teach people that will help fix our neighborhoods. If people had the skills to fix our neighborhoods, to fix these vacant and abandoned homes, they would. And that's what we need to do instead of demolishing them. All right, final question. It's a quick one. Tell us who you're supporting for mayor of Detroit, Ms. Sheffield. <laughs> do we have to answer that question? Because <laughs> I know last time we both were asked and we, I don't think neither of us answered. It's up to you. Um, I think I, we're rather just focusing on the issues of the district and I will work with whoever's elected. Mr. Ollier. I would have to echo that sentiment. I'm here to campaign for Adam Ollier. That's who I'll be voting for on November 5th. Uh, but I'm very excited about new leadership and the opportunity to get these challenges fixed. So you're not supporting either one of you are, are not endorsing any candidate? I have not been. Are you endorsing a candidate? <laughs> It's I'm a lukewarm endorsement Sheffield. if you can't say I'm it. I'm endorsing Mary Sheffield for City Council oh, District okay. 5. Okay. Well, now each candidate will have 30 seconds to summarize their candidacy and to tell the points most important to them. First, Mr. Ollier. Well, I think when you start talking about uh, this election, it's going to be an election that we have to decide on electing people who are qualified to do the job. The way we select a doctor, someone who's done the work, who's been experienced, who you can look at their, their work and say they've done it, that's how we need to elect a council person, not by their name, but by their record. And I've shown the record of doing that. It's going to be all about what we build as our city. And that's got to be focused on our neighborhoods, clearing up the light, and making it a safer community. I think when we talk about moving forward in the city of Detroit, it's important that the people have a voice at that table. There's going to be a lot of development that comes to the city of Detroit, and the people have to have a voice at that table. I think my opponent has a very, represents a narrow self-interest, and I think I represent the people as a whole. And moving forward, I believe that I can help create a safer, cleaner, and more economically competitive Detroit where everyone has an equal chance and say so at what goes on in their neighborhood, um, the land that's up for grabs, that really the people have a voice um, moving forward. I think we've had so many council members that have said the right thing. Um, they've got elected and they have forgot about who has put them there and they lose focus on the people. I am a people person. I am about building, rebuilding our neighborhoods and I hope that I have your vote and support moving forward. We uh, invite all of you to go to our, the website, missionvote.org. Thank you, Adam. Olie and Mary Sheffield from District 5 for participating. And remember, you can find all of these conversations on the myvote.org website for all of us at Detroit Public Television. I'm Vicki Thomas. And I'm Jerome Vaughn. Thanks for watching.